Hello guys, and welcome to some more Carol programming. Today we're finishing up Unit 2 uh, with top-down design and decomposition. This is really easy because it's not something technical that you're learning. It's more like a programming tip. And like I said, that's what Carol is supposed to be. Carol is supposed to start you up to actually dive into other programming languages. After we finish functions, we're going to jump into super carol and for loops, and that's going to be very important. So let's start with hurdle carol, which is uh, a little example. Uh, the code here is basically supposed to be simplified into how it would be from a top-down design perspective. So what happens here is that you have your hurdle carol. Hurdle is gonna, carol is going to go over the hurdles. And then and the ending point facing east. And here you can see that the code was broken down into several functions. You have the function run to finish, which basically makes Carol move uh, four times. Then you have the function uh, run to hurdle, which makes her move three times. Then you have the function jump hurdle, which makes her uh, jump and turn right and all that. And then you have the function turn right, which is very important since Carol cannot turn right on her own. And then on the star function, you have all of the functions put up here condensed into the actual code that is going to be run. And then, like I said, if you press run, well, Carol gets to the finish line. Uh, Top-down design is basically grabbing the bigger picture, in this case the two hurdles that Carol is supposed to jump, and breaking it down into little snippets that are easier to go through, like in this case. So let's jump into our uh, one assignment, the two towers. And we need to do this, but thinking about how can we break the main code into smaller pieces. So we have our start function. And to actually put into practice the whole theme of Unit 2.4, let's see what we need to do. So Carol needs to move. Then Carol needs to turn left. Then Carol needs to put a ball. Then Carol needs to move. Put a ball. And move. And she's going to put a last ball. Then she's going to move once more. Then she's going to have to turn left. Wait, she should be up here. Facing there, so one, two, three. Three, so turn left and turn left. And now there she should be facing east, but now that's not enough. So let's just leave it at two turn lefts because we're just going to want her to turn around. And then she's going to move, move, and move. And then when she's facing south, we're going to have her turn left again. Uh, and then move twice, move, and then turn left, put a ball, then move, put a ball, move, put a ball, And then she's going to move a fourth time to be on the top of the towers, and then turn left, turn left, turn left. Great. Now we have our main code, right? And all of this is going to be completely functional, and it's going to do exactly what the result world should be at. Now, the only problem here is the efficiency of this. There's too many turn lefts. There's so many repeated stuff that we can just grab and we could make into a function. So let's do just that, which is also going to help us break this into smaller parts. Now the first thing that we're gonna need is Carol to move twice, because when she's here in the first dot, oh wait, actually never mind. She's gonna have to move once. So we need Carol to make the tower. So to make a tower, function build, assuming that Carol is here in the very bottom, 
she's going to have to turn left, first of all. Then she's going to have to put ball. Then move. Put ball. Move. Put ball. And then move. And then she's going to be up top but facing north. We're going to need her to turn around. Although, no, let's, let's take the turn around out of the picture. So now we have her build function. Something very useful always when programming with Carol is the turn right function. So, my bad there. So, for that, we're going to need her to turn left three times. And then let's also go ahead and write our turnaround function. Because that is also very useful when programming with Carol. So turn left, turn left, and that should do it. And now we have our build function, we have our turn right function, we have our turnaround function. So what we're going to do up next is that, let's think, after she built the tower and she's facing north, what do we need her to do? Well, first she needs to turn around. We got that check. And then she needs to move one, two, three, three times. So let's do another function called down, because this is what she's going to use to come down. So once she's facing up north, we're going to have her turn around. Oops. And then move, move, and move. Now, after those three move functions, she should be in the floor facing the bottom. But if she is facing the bottom, we might just let her face east. So let's finish this function with a last turn left. And now that we have her down function, uh, Carol should be here. She's going to have to move twice to the next tower. So let's go ahead and do that as well into a function. Function double step. And then move, move. Oops, wait one second. And we are back. So, as I was saying, I accidentally forgot to add this thing right here the curly rackets. Uh, and this should be indented, right? Wait, no, never mind. This should be indented. Great. So, <clears throat> apologies for the nose sounds. So after she makes a double step, she's going to be down here. And we're going to need her to turn left and then build another tower. But at that point, if we go into our build function, it starts with a turn left. So we don't need to worry about that. Now we will go into our start function. And what does Carol need to do? So she's going to move once. That stays exactly the same. Then here she's going to build a tower. So build. And then she's going to do a double step here. Because after she... Oh, oh no, wait, never mind. She needs to come down of the tower. Mm, good. What does it say, though? Wait, something is wrong here. Build function should be right. And Wait, let's try this out. See if there's any actual error. Okay, so it's perfectly fine at the moment. So after Carol builds the tower and comes down, she needs to do a double step. And then she needs to build again. <clears throat> and now with that, we should be left in the second tower. Ooh, my bad. <laughs> Carol needs to turn right afterwards. And now we can run it. Ooh. That was not there the first time, if I recall it correctly, but anyways. And there we go. Now, the next assignment. Oh. Indentation. 
However, I wonder why it says it's off. Oh, yeah, it's like a couple of... Okay, just a little hassle. Not really a syntax error, but oh well. So, the next and almost last thing is a little bit of debugging. You know, debugging is always a useful skill to have. So, in this world, Carol is supposed to build a C. So, we have our start function. We have our put ball in a row. Then we got our put ball in diagonal. So, let's see what's wrong with this. First, you know, I like to put my functions up top, define them first, and then actually call them. But this doesn't really matter if you're actually writing your code. So if we press run, Carol doesn't know how to turn right. Okay, first of all, there's a turn right function. Uh, I mean, turn right is getting called, but there is no such thing as a turn right function. So, makes Carol turn right. So now function turn right and then we can make our turn left turn left and turn left great now if we press run again oh you made a typo that was that was on me yep okay now we can press run Carol doesn't know how to turn around <laughs> okay then let's make her turn around function turn around by making her turn left twice. Oops. <sighs> Let's see. Good. And there we go. It was all about two functions missing. They were in the code, they were being called, but they were not defined, so the computer had nothing really to call. Now, submit and continue, and we can walk on to our last little reflection. Top-down design. What it is, and how is it helpful? So top-down design is pretty easy to define. You decompose a bigger project into smaller snippets that are easier to accomplish. Now how does this help when you're coding? Well, it makes things look more clear. It makes things easier to understand. It allows you to be able to distinguish the parts of your code and it's just overall a very useful tool because it's like a roadmap yeah it, it kinda provides you a roadmap of how you're going to pull through with a project let's say in the very far future if I wanted to make a game Okay, first I need to look at the bigger picture. What is it going to be? Let's say it's a 2D platformer. So I'm going to make my steps, my little snippets, you know. I'm going to start it from top to down, step by step. So first, maybe I want to start with a theme. What is my game going to be about? What? Yeah, let's say that I decide to go for a 2D platformer with some story to it. So what's going to be the lore to it? Then maybe I can go for the sprites. Or I can do the code instead first. Either one. And then inside of the sprites, well, let's say that I want to do the player first. Then do some enemies. Uh, do platforms. Do backgrounds. Do foregrounds. And so on. And this all goes in, like, sprites. And now let's say in another scenario that I wanted to do the code first. Okay. So, let's see. I want to make the player movement first. I want to uh, add a teleporting mechanic. You know, I want to add enemy AI. 
you know you're breaking down all of the stuff that you're going to do into little things let's say that inside the teleporting mechanic uh you need to aim where you want to teleport so you have to make that into your code and then maybe you need to make a sound for when you teleport and that's pretty much all that top-down design is you're grabbing your bigger picture your whole game and then you're gonna simply decompose it and make it into these little parts then when you look over you're like oh yeah this is next or oh yeah I need to start with the enemy AI you know top-down design is a very powerful tool for getting a roadmap of your project for understanding your project for knowing what steps you're gonna do and when you're gonna take them and that finishes everything for unit functions of Carol so I hope you enjoyed I hope you've been pulling along with this entire series please like subscribe and comment any questions that you need to be answered and I will gladly respond so in the next episode we will start with commenting your code and then pool three unit three of super carol well it was nice seeing you guys take care stay safe and keep coding